Hello, my name is Blake within the Hyperloop. Today we're going to get started with the SpaceX pod competition team Toom Hyperloop who won the uh, Hyperloop pod competition last year at SpaceX and they released this video um, that is a recruitment tool um, for this year's pod competition and this was their winning run last year. And as we see the one camera fails um, but the camera underneath the pod is still recording and I believe there was one issue uh, in their run um, that resulted in a not so uh, uh, gradual um, stopping of the pod but it totally worked and uh, so um, we also um, heard yesterday that HyperPoland successfully tested and demonstrated their technology um, and this is one of the first runs publicly and that goes by really fast um, but uh, really glad to see this HyperPoland has uh, been working really hard in developing their um, phased approach to Hyperloop first it will be on rail and then it will be kind of open air like this and then it will be in an evacuated uh, covering or two. So good job Hyper Poland. And we have a couple more images uh, from the release um, including uh, kind of a talk beforehand and um, this article really does a good job explaining uh, the event um, and the demonstration and uh, kind of goes back into the history of Hyper Poland, um, what it could mean uh, for the startup, what the test track, um, you know, will look like um, at the future, and you know, they they say that there might be a 500 meter test track um, where a full size prototype uh, will move, and it will be able to reach 300 kilometers an hour. Um, so yeah, and this was a demonstration last um, uh, yesterday, uh, like one fifth scale. Um, so yeah, really exciting. It really gets into who was at the event, um, what their sponsors uh, were for this demonstration. And uh, we're really looking forward to perhaps a video uh, from the event and um, you know, where they don't, uh, they don't wanna position some, themselves as like a Hyperloop company, but they're um, a phased approach to work with rail companies, which I think is uh, really important and uh, significant um, as one of the few companies that's offering uh, rail companies this kind of phased approach. So that's really fascinating. So um, we'll put a link of, to this article in the description. Next big news item is that Heart Hyperloop um, has uh, gained a multi-million euro investment uh, by a consortium of business groups um, leading uh, by a company called Kulin Industries and um, really interesting that this is the funding that will secure the first full-scale operational Hyperloop's test facility. Um, and um, the investment run was backed by a German fund, Freist Capital, multiple Dutch and Belgian investors, um, and several uh, investors were there. And uh, Heart Hyperloop is now uh, putting out a lot of press um, and you can read more about it in this press release. Um, and we're not really sure exact dollar amounts, um, but the company has raised more than 10 million euros to date, which is incredible. Um, and it really, um, Heart Hyperloop is positioning themselves about um, as an alternative uh, to the uh, polluting aviation industry. So that's really kind of fascinating. We don't. We haven't heard that other Hyperloop companies go that strongly against the, um, uh, aviation, but it makes sense because Hyperloop, um, they're looking at uh, technology that is medium to long distance travel. So that totally makes sense. So we're just gonna look at some of the other um, press that's been pushed out um, by Heart Hyperloop about their uh, new funding partners um, and uh, Kulian Industries. Um, also released uh, their information about it. Um, let's just check that out real quick. Um, this came as a little bit of a surprise um, 
and we're really glad to hear that Heart Hyperloop um, does indeed have the funding now to build their test track. Um, and this might be a lot of the same um, information that we've seen earlier. Um, so yeah, they're going to uh, prove to Hyperloop technologies of more than uh, 700 kilometers an hour or 435 miles per hour. And they're also looking to expand their team um, and acquire investors in future install investment rounds and partnering up with additional companies that will join existing partners. Um, so yeah, it's a big hitter uh, group. Um, so we're looking forward to, and this is kind of a new render of a possible station platform. I don't know why there are people standing on top of the tube, but, um, but you can see um, a lot of their marketing is very clean. Um, you know, and they're still advertising 1,000 kilometers an hour, um, so that's interesting. And here's some just press photos uh, from the press package. And this is the uh, founding Hearts Hyperloop members. Um, and this is apparently the Heart Hyperloop uh, group. group. Um, and there's a lot more people than I had thought. Um, and then this is their initial um, lane switching test track. Um, and this is the proposed um, European Hyperloop Center by heart um, to prove technology um, out a little bit more. Um, and changing subjects, um, Eurotube, uh, the Swiss company that's trying to make um, sustainable um, cement tubing, um, and they had an information event on the construction of a test track. Um, and they, we haven't seen any video of this, um, but um, we see that uh, Canton Valley, um, where the test track will be located, was invited. Um, some other interesting folk, as well as uh, the Swiss National Railway Service. So yeah, we're looking forward to hearing more about that. Um, we haven't seen a lot of press about that, but we're gonna dig a little bit harder. Um, changing subjects, um, I'm sure this was on a lot of people's minds as they were hearing about a test track being built in their backyard. Um, what, is, what is the passenger preferences of Hyperloop travelers? This is from Hyperloop Connected, um, the clearinghouse from Delft Hyperloop of information about Hyperloop. Uh, so um, it's a really fascinating article about a lot of um, uh, feelings of what people will have um, in using a Hyperloop. And really the recommendations are that safety should be number one focus as this is the main characteristic of future users will attach value to. Uh, money for being able to offer Hyperloop trip attractive and competitive price um, and for investors. Um, it's also very important to encourage creativity and innovation in the development of Hyperloop as rapid tech changes are happening. Um, so yeah, it's just a really interesting article. Um, to kind of learn about Hyperloop and what it could be in society. Um, another interesting article that totally took us by surprise is that our loop um, has uh, apparently purchased and bought the IP of Arrivo, the other Hyperloop startup that um, went defuc defunct. Um, really fascinating. Uh, our loop quietly bought up the startup's IP earlier this year. Um, and uh, it's a fascinating article uh, with different uh, interviews and a really good uh, scoop. Um, and it has an interview uh, mentioned from Bam Brogan. Um, and yeah, just kind of fascinating. Um, and we we're disheartened to learn that they were closing um, uh, Revo. Um, we were in talks with them since then to point to a figure out exactly what they've been working on and what's happened with their IP. So we ended up acquiring it earlier this year. Um, they've had conversations with a number of key Arrivo employees and that many of them have expressed the desire to see the concept through, which is fascinating. Um, so yeah, we don't know how much or um, Virgin Hyperloop One, of course, has raised a lot more money, $172 million this year. Um, and on top of a previous funding round of a $295 million. Um, changing subjects, uh, one of the Swiss pod competition teams, um, EPFL Loop, has decided to opt out of the upcoming Hyperloop pod competition. 
um, bon chance on future endeavors. Um, so yeah, so now it's just going to be Swiss Loop representing Switzerland and SpaceX this uh, summer. We have yet to kind of really hear more details about that. Um, all the Hyperloop teams are interested, in including uh, Indian team Abhishkar Hyperloop, who wrote a really cool um, follow-up piece on the uh, finals competition uh, posted on their blog. So I'd highly recommend you check it out um, to learn what exactly uh, was going through their mind. And then finally, Hyperloop One, um, kind of uh, randomly, it appears, uh, released this uh, promo video that Hyperloop systems across the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia will help envision 2030 by nurturing uh, the nation's innovation and entrepreneurial cultural growing knowledge workforce and connecting people across the kingdom and the region. Um, this is kind of rapprochement from uh, Virgin backing out um, due to political issues uh, in Saudi Arabia. Um, and Richard Branson stepping down as the uh, head of Virgin Hyperloop One. So yeah, definite rapprochement. Um, the Kingdom and Virgin 2030 is still interested in Hyperloop One, and so is um, both groups. So kind of fascinating launching the 29th of October 2019 in Riyadh. So it will be interesting on what exactly we're hearing about um, massive corridors uh, through Saudi Arabia and linking um, great stretches of uh, the country. So stay in the Hyperloop, let us know what you think, uh, what companies are you fascinated about, um, and where would you like a Hyperloop route? Feel free to comment in the comments below. Have a good day.